Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. In this video we will be finalizing the character class that we've created in C++ by doing a little bit of the setup in the blueprint regarding the camera and stuff like that. So to get started we already have our BP underscore character which is a child of the YT character base class so we just need to make sure we open the full blueprint editor and this is really just going to be setting things up like how the camera rotates, uh, which mesh we'll be using and we'll just do a step by step on this. So in fact, so that we can test this as we go through, if we just go back to the blueprints folder, create a new blueprint class of uh, type game mode base, and we'll just call this one the BP underscore game mode base. Now this is perfectly fine doing this in blueprint for now. If we ever do need to make a game mode in C++, then we can simply come in here and change the parent class to the C++ version that we make. But this is just going to allow us to pop in. Uh, we can change the default pawn class to be our bp underscore character and then we want to go to the project settings the maps and modes and just make sure that the bp underscore game mode base is the default that way when we press play although we can't see anything because we haven't actually set the character up we do have here the bp underscore character as one which is uh, spawned in and we have some rotation uh, from the camera so for the static mesh if you've watched any of my other tutorials you'll see that i like this approach uh, just because everyone can follow along so to get a visual representation for the character, we're going to drag in a cube. We're going to right click on the cube and we're going to change this to a static mesh. So convert cube to static mesh. I'm going to put this in a new folder. So we'll just come over and uh, we'll create a new folder in here called assets and then a new folder in the assets called meshes. So we're just going to place this into the meshes. We'll call this SM underscore cube and we'll hit OK on that. So again, I like to do this in the videos just so that everyone can follow along if I ever need to help debug something or I've got uh, an issue, assuming that you followed this approach, I'll know the kind of the scale of the object that you're using, the way that the collision set up and everything. So we can delete that from the, the level. We can go to our character. For the mesh comp, which is the one that we created, I'm just gonna place the SM underscore cube. And then in the viewport, we can see that we now have the cube here. So we're gonna to wanna to make the capsule a little bit wider and a little bit smaller to fit the cube. Uh, because we're using the character movement component, we do still want to use the capsule collider because a lot of logic uh, kind of expects the capsule component to be there. I'm just gonna change this to be a capsule height. Probably about half of that should be fine at 44 and then a radius for about 34 should widen that out. We won't quite be able to see it, but I think if we press play, you can see that kind of uh, fell from the sky a little bit. And then when it landed, it did in fact rest on the floor. So that's fine. So the next thing is that we have the cube kind of spinning when we look around. And I, I kind of wanted um, to allow us to easily have things like ray tracing and things like that. I kind of want the free camera where the character doesn't move around, but we have a bit more freedom in where the camera is looking. So we're going to come in and we'll change these settings on the spring arm and the camera component. So first of all, if we begin with the spring arm, I think what we want to do is we'll give this a slightly longer arm of 1200. So that just pushes the camera back a little bit. Now I do want the use pawn control rotation, I think, yeah. So this will snap this down. So we now don't have um, any override for the rotation. So in fact, we can just zero that back out to uh, reset that back out to zero on the uh, the Y axis there because we had that overridden and that now will not take effect. Uh, but this does mean that when we come in, we can move the, uh, the rotation of the spring arm around up and down, uh, but we still have the cube rotating with us, which is the last thing I think I wanna stop. So back in the character components, just need to try and remember where this is. Apologies again, trying to do a lot of this on the fly. Uh, we're basically setting this up a lot like the third person template where the third person character would just stand there and you can pan around the characters. Just a slightly nicer camera setup uh, than having them constantly rotate. In fact, I think it's on the, the character itself. Uh, we're looking for the Yule, so uh, use control of your rotation. So that's what is making the cube constantly turn with the rotation of the camera. And there we go. Okay, so now we can look around the cube and if we move it, then they're independent of each other. And like I said, this is just gonna make it a lot easier that we can kind of pan around and if we wanted to ray trace onto an object, then that should give us a bit more freedom. Um, I'm just gonna place the player start back on the floor. And I think there's one other thing is that we want the character's rotation to orient to where it's moving. So again, I think this is on the character movement this time. I think it does just come under character movement when walking. 
or if we just type in orient up here, uh, orient rotation to movement. So there's the rotation settings, there we go. So that just means that it will take in the direction it's moving and it will just add some rotation there. So that just looks a little bit nicer. So very simple movement, but we now have the player able to move around. Now this is just gonna open us up. Like I said, this was kind of a brief aside to the main thing, but this now frees us up that if we wanted to add a jumping pad or a, an opening door or something, and we wanted to add overlap collisions to test that, this is gonna be the start of our very like sandbox-esque setup so that we can add anything that we wanted into this little level and have our guy move around, get to the different bits for testing, the, uh, the C++ code that we'll be writing. So the final thing, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger, assuming that we are gonna be just plopping assets around. Um, we'll just make this something like 10 by 10, just so we've got a little bit more space to navigate through. So nice and simple with the character class there, nothing too fancy. The other thing is just to test as well. We haven't actually looked at this yet, but remember we did add our jump functionality in C++. So if we press space, we do have our jump functionality working. So all of the actual C++ code has worked as well. If you had to pick up a control pad, I think I've got mine connected. We should also see that if you set analog or gamepad set up on this, it should be working as well. Mine doesn't seem to be. So just in case that is a code issue, I should probably fix that. So gamepad, left thumbstick was the move forward. Okay, after looking through it, uh, it seems as though it is just my gamepad being a bit weird. Just double checked a few things. Everything has been named correctly. So we've done all of that correctly. It's the lookup rate and the turn rate that we've used the gamepad for. Now, the other thing to note, this is what made me think that this is all working fine, is if we look at the turn rate, we also use left and right keys. So these are the ones which would be calling the function just here. So if the function itself wasn't working, the keys shouldn't work either. But if I do press left and right on the keyboard, then we do actually get the turning functionality. So we should obviously be getting the same thing if we use the gamepad. Just for me, it seems the gamepad isn't working. And then I also realized that I've set the gamepad face button bottom, which is A, to be jump. And again, we know that jump works, but only with the keyboard. If my gamepad, it doesn't. So I think there's just something wrong with the connection to my gamepad, but I just wanted to uh, recap and just confirm that there definitely doesn't seem to be an issue with the code for the movement. For me, it's just my gamepad isn't working and I don't know why. But with all of those uh, variables changed and that set up, that is the player ready to go. So like I said, I'm gonna leave that for the, uh, the player's movement. That's really the rudimentary stuff that it needs to do. Everything else is gonna be the specific classes and functionalities we start making. If you do have any requests or anything in particular you'd like to see, then leave a comment below. Uh, that's something I forgot to mention. I have, like I've already mentioned two or three already. So I'm gonna be doing, doing line tracing, gonna be doing overlap events. I'll implement some kind of switching on and off of a light so we can see interaction between different classes. Same for a door, so I'll have like some kind of interactable base class that we can extend just to get the general theory of that across. But if there's any specific topics that you want to see, uh, specifically in C++ that hasn't been covered very well elsewhere that you think might go into a nice condensed 10 minute topic, uh, like I said, this isn't gonna be making a complete inventory system in C++ because that isn't a single shot video, which is what these are intended to be. Uh, but do leave those quick suggestions down in the comments below. I'll definitely look through those. And if I think any of them will fit the, the playlist well, I will add those in. So do leave your comments below. I'm gonna leave this video here for now though. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.